Okay, so this is overflow, and uh, we've been talking about faith. So we'll open in prayer and then get started. So Father God, I thank you for this time that we can come together. And I thank you for um, your word. I thank you that it's edifying, that it encourages us, and it helps us every day um, in our walk through this world and helps us keep going in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I might do my... I noticed last time when I was doing this that I was actually a little louder and clearer with the headphones. So I'm going to put those in real quick. Although I sound funny to myself. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about that. I probably could do that too. I'll try that next time. <clears throat> okay, there we go. All right, so we've been talking about faith and I was going through my book um, on faith and study in it, and the, I got so sidetracked yesterday, so we didn't have power. So I was, I was reading, I'm like, ooh, that's interesting. So I was all over the place. <laughs> so um, one of the things that I'm going to go into, share my screen, and we're going to start. Um, so one of the things that it was that was brought up um, we talked about faith always being there from the beginning and that um, God formed the earth by faith. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Now earth is formless and empty. Darkness is over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So he formed, he used faith to form um, the earth and stuff. But one of the things I never thought about as I was reading through here was that Adam didn't know anything but faith. You know, God formed Adam. And um, as you recall, when God made animals, he would tell Adam, whatever you say they are, they are. So he would name them. And Adam didn't know any different than other than faith until Satan came into the picture and corrupted it. So I was gonna let me see here. I think that's over here in the fall. Here, here we go. In Genesis. So I never really thought about the fact that Adam was born and you know God breathed life into him. He he knew nothing but faith until Satan came into the picture and then showed him something different. So he uh he tempted uh Eve. And then down here um, in seven, it says, uh, well, when the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave her some to her husband who was with her and ate. And then their, their eyes were both of them were opened and they realized they had, they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then man and the, the then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. This one got me too, but I'll come back to it. <laughs> and then they hid themselves from the Lord among the trees, but the Lord called to them and said, Where are you? And he said, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So um Adam knew nothing. But faith until Satan introduced fear. So what what Adam did, um, Adam Adam used his faith to change the surroundings, to take care of the garden and all of that stuff. And then Satan comes in, gives him an option of this other thing, which sounds really great, sounds good, sounds like you're going to get wisdom, but you're disobeying God by doing so. So Adam essentially committed treason and put his faith in a foreign God, which was Satan and his word. And he followed that. And by doing that, his faith was perverted into a negative force, which is fear, which we can see right there. He says, I was afraid. So that's where it, it took a flip and switched. But up until that point i find it really interesting that that adam didn't know anything but faith 
is it is it faith or is it just really well i mean it's there's a combination here um it's part faith and part knowledge i mean he knew god like none of us yeah knew no god i mean he had a close relation so did eve for that matter they both knew him and, and you kind of i think it's almost a case of familiar familiarity breeds contempt but that's what that's Where what you're I think. so used to this relationship with God, that kind of, to me, if I had that kind of relationship and knowledge and, and the ability to talk to God like they did, mm -hmm. that would blow my mind. But that's what faith but, is, is actually of that relationship and putting your trust in him above all else. Right. And that's all they knew. So it's like a child when knowing your parents and you trust them because that's all you know, whatever they say goes that's all they knew and then they allowed somebody else to influence them and they and actually flop switch that into fear it's interesting to me that faith in, in the terms of what the bible talks about faith and what we think of as faith has many facets to it i mean there's a there's some of it is trust some of it is obedience but it all, I mean, because it all feeds into each other, if you know what I mean. I mean, yep. for example, their disobedience broke that faith. Yeah. It broke the relationship with God. They no yep. longer had that close ability to interact with God like they did before. And that yep. was a shame. What a horrible, horrible shame. But they were suckered into it by Satan. And he's still doing it. He still to does it today. Yep. If, if people say, oh, look at... Adam and Eve, what, what sucker, what stupid people they were. Well, um, hello, if you keep listening to the people that are here in this world, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. You think you're not talking to Satan when he tells you that, oh, this is good and, you know, don't worry about what God says. You know, he wasn't really serious about, you know, they listen to yeah. all these arguments and it's just nothing but quicksand. Yeah. Well, and, and, and people Satan. say, and people might look at this and say, well, um, Adam, you know, walked with God. Well, guess what? If you, if I was thinking about this yesterday, that just blew my mind. How would God walk with man? He would have had to take the form of man to walk alongside man. Right. So um, the first thing that came to me was Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's i mean if he came in the form of man to walk alongside of him it would have been jesus right and um so we have no excuse because we have the ability to walk alongside jesus every day follow his example have that relationship and so um that's kind of the point here is we have the same opportunity adam had if we choose to walk in faith and follow christ like well, exactly. You're you're that's you're going to use your faith to develop that relationship. Yep. I mean, but it's like we've said before, it's going to take some work to do that. I mean, it's just not going to happen overnight. I mean, somebody's not going to snap their fingers and say, OK, now you got faith and now you got this relationship. It's not going to be quite that easy. I mean, it is easy in the sense that right. um, it, it's free. Mm -hmm. Nobody's charging you to have that relationship for God. Uh, you, you're the one that makes that decision. Yeah. And, and well, of course, with the help and the spirit of God, but, but you have to make that step. And, and that's the point here. And, and unfortunately they did the reverse, right? They had that relationship already. Yep. They knew nothing else. Suddenly this Satan comes into the world in the form while well, that we it's, metaphorically, we say it's a snake. It doesn't matter what form he took. Right. He fooled them. He gave him these arguments that when you read it, it's like, wow, he was really, he sounds like a used car salesman. Nothing against used car salesmen, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, well, this old baby, uh, it's only been driven on Sundays by a little old lady. Yeah. Okay. It's me. He makes it sound good, but I mean, essentially what he put before them was, you know, a choice between faith or fear, but he packaged it to it sounded really, really good. And well, then, yeah, once again, he's back to his old standbys. He uses fear. He uses hate. He uses all these things that are going to scare you or make you feel 
bad of some way. And, and then if you go with Satan's way, you're going to feel much better. Everything's right. going to be perfect. Everything's going to be great. Right. It well, never faith, turns out that way, does it? Yeah, no. Well, and the, the faith is, the, or fear is the opposite of faith. And that's exactly what he did is he offered them faith, but he offered it to them in the package of you're losing out because he's not telling you everything. So, and he does that today. You know, he's like, well, if you don't do this, you're losing out. If you're not drinking with your friends, you're, you're missing out on something. And yep. so that's, he used that to try to get them to, re, to see, you know, to, to fall. And it worked because they are mm -hmm. like, oh, well, maybe God is lying to us because that's all we know. So he put doubt in there. And then he, he used that, you know, he drove it in with, you're missing out. And he's trying to hide something from you. And they put their faith in Satan instead of uh, faith in God and trusted his words rather than God over God's words. And that's what caused them to fall. And well, we me, have to really watch that, that we're, we're not, we have to look at it as choosing. That's, and that's the thing. We, we, we try to bring out the point that Christians do that you've got to watch out. I mean, don't, it's not about you. I mean, the whole world, I mean, that's what they, that's what the world wants you to think. It's all about you. All you have to do is this. All you have to do is that. It may make yep. it sound like it's all about your vanity, all about your ego. Um, and, and when you're, when it comes to helping people, for example, well, if you help people, it's going to make you feel better. All you have to do is go with this program and it's going to solve everybody's problem. Yep. Well, it doesn't solve their problems. It actually ends up putting money in somebody's pocket who has no, nothing to do with the issue in the first place. And that's, way satan sells these things through yeah. your ego through your greed through your i mean look at what's going on right now in the government i mean they're using people the greed of people they're using their ego they're using their vanity they want you to think that if you take this certain position on this certain issue you are morally superior to everybody else yep yep yeah it, it makes you know he, he's going to package it in a way to make you uh feel like you're missing out so and he's, and he's the grand packager he knows how to appeal to us he knows yep. your weaknesses believe yep. me he's he's got a, a army of angels of evil angels of course that are helping him and uh, they know what your weak spots are they're going to yep. go for it they're going to attack you even if you have faith in god they're going in fact you're probably more of a target the stronger your faith is. Yeah. Well, and then um, the next one I want to look at is is Abel. And the story of a uh, Abel and Cain is kind of interesting because, um, you know, Abel and uh, Cain ended up killing his brother because of jealousy. But it says, um, now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. These are, are Adam's and Eve's children. In the course of time, Cain brought some fruits brought some of the fruits from the soils as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but in Cain, his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Now the other, another version, I don't remember, it might have been the um, amplified version says that Abel brought his best. So, and this was before the law. So this is more of an act of worship because they didn't know, you know, they didn't have the law saying that you had to cover your sins with blood or any of that stuff because that hadn't come into effect yet. So this was more of a, an offering of worship. And I think Cain kind of had the attitude of well this will work you know i'll just take some of what i some of my stuff and offer it it doesn't really matter he was kind of complacent about it he didn't really have faith in it he was just like well whatever i'll just do it because and abel brought an offering of the best of his flock um the best fat portions which has all the flavor in it 
and of the firstborn of his flock. So he took the best of the best and laid it before the God as an offering of worship. And uh, so Cain became angry because his wasn't accepted as like Abel's jealousy arose and he ends up killing his brother. But Abel's faith was, you know, he wanted to honor God and he knew by honoring God that, um, that he would be blessed. And because of that, Abel had really great faith. I mean, he, nobody really taught them anything that he just knew to honor the Lord. And that's where his faith came in. And then Cain, of course, he stepped in and, and uh, took the opposite route <laughs> and did only totally the opposite. <laughs> and that's where we don't want to be. Well, hey, well, it's, you see that happening today, too, as well. I mean, it, it really hasn't. Not much has changed over the millennia. It, it, you see people, you know, they, they give money to the church or whatever, I mean, to help people. I mean, but it's not with uh, the right feeling, I guess, would be the word for it, yeah. or the right attitude. Yeah. Because they're kind of giving because they have to, in a sense, and they feel like they have to, mm -hmm. and they're giving for that reason, or they're giving because they, they think they're going to get something back for it. Well, I know that God is always going to take care of me. I know that he, I can't out give him, but right. I'm not necessarily going to give so I can get more back. I'm giving because I'm giving to the Lord. He blessed me. We give to the Lord. We give money for charities that help other people. That's why we, we do it. We, we do it because we want to help people. We do it because we want to spread the word of God. We, yeah. we don't do it because we want to make ourselves look good. Yeah. See, that's that's a totally wrong reason. Yeah. And I think that's where Cain's heart was. Cain was just like, um, I mean, they had a relation. They knew God. Adam and Eve, you know, they, they, they knew about God. They talked about it. Adam and Eve were still there. They had a, a close relationship. And Cain was just like, well, I'm just going to do this to kind of appease him, you know, just right. to get by like you're talking about. And Abel was like, I want to do this because I want to honor and worship and bless the Lord. And so their, their attitude behind it was completely different. And that is why um, God honored Abel's faith over Cain because Cain wasn't doing it in faith. Cain was just throwing it out there. Well, I hope it sticks. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, he, he was looking more for, well, he's, he's upset because his ego was bruised. Yep. I mean, he, instead of looking at, well, why didn't God, <clears throat> why didn't God look on mine with favor? I mean, he should have looked, that's what he, he should have done is looked at it and said, you know what, this wasn't the, the greatest. And I, I should have, uh, been more uh, conscientious of what I was doing and why. Right. Yeah. Instead of instead of worrying about what his brother his brother did something that pleased God, he should have been glad for that. But no, he got upset because his wasn't as good. Right. So now you've got this jealousy thing. You've got this ego thing, and that's of course happens all the time. I mean, it happens now. Well, yeah, yeah. really. If you really think about it, Cain gave his stuff without purpose where Abel gave with purpose. You know, Abel did it from a heart with purpose, wanting to bless, where Cain just kind of threw it out there without purpose. Well, God will do what he wants with it. Well, like Cain gave with a purpose, I guess, sort of, but it was for his own... For his own purpose. The way he looked. You know, yeah. that's what he was worried about. And, and so, But that's wrong. I mean, I, I hear, unfortunately, even in churches sometimes when they're urging kids to... Um, to give to certain charities or, or help, you know, pay for the school. And so they, they give them prizes and, you know, they get different levels and all this stuff. And I think, no, that's not, that's the wrong way to do it. Yeah. You, you don't want to appeal to somebody's greed to give more. <laughs> that's totally wrong. I, I mean, I can't find anything more wrong, uh, uh, worse reason to be giving to God or anything else. Yeah. If you want to help people, then you help people. You don't help them to make yourself look good. Yeah. Or get something back for it. I mean, come on. Yeah, in uh in Hebrews eleven, um, where it talk it talks about the faith chapter here. But it says, uh, I'm just gonna read this by by faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous. 
when God spoke well of his offering and faith by faith, Abel speak, still speaks, even though he's dead. You know, it's his actions are still speaking. And that's what, you know, that's one of, one of the things about faith is faith never dies. Exactly. Uh, you know, and just thinking about that, I mean, Easter's coming up and the reason for it, we all know, is that when Christ died and was rose again on Easter, think about it. He could have said, you know what, what's in it for me? What am I getting out of this? Yeah, I'm not getting anything out of it. Jesus didn't get a, a single dime out of the whole thing. He died. He suffered. He was uh -huh. beaten. He got nothing for it. Yep. All he wanted was us to love him back. Yep. That's all he wanted. Well, he and wanted to repair that relationship that was lost when Adam sinned. You exactly. know, he wanted to restore that relationship of of Jesus walking in the garden as God, you know, walking in the garden side by side with Adam. That's what he wanted to repair so that we could be walk alongside him just as Adam did. Right. Yep. So unfortunately, uh, a lot of people don't get it. Yeah. They, they think it's all about some kind of material gain in this world. Yep. It isn't. No. You can build the most beautiful churches. You can you can give millions and millions of dollars. I mean, like uh, some of these billionaires. You know, I mean, they're trying to buy their legacy. That's what they call it. Right. And guess what? I mean, it'll all be dust. I mean, they they will never know what their money did or didn't do. Yeah. And, I mean, it's nice to help people with the money, but. From the attitude that they get, they're going to get nothing out of it. Yeah, you got to have a. In yeah. the end, they think they're getting something. All this, no, no the people, these, the, they, when they give all this money, they make a, you know, they had their publicists put this out there. Oh, I gave a million dollars for this or a million, you know, who cares? You, you've got, they've got some of these guys have so much money, it's just mind blowing. It's more money than most people have in an entire state. Yeah, you can't do it for show. You have to do it from the heart. Well, and, and they think they're good. Like I said, they're, they're going to somehow buy their way into heaven. They're, they're hedging their bets, so to speak. Yeah. And, and they're, and they're, it's almost like they're buying stock, you know, yeah. well, I'm going to buy stock in heaven, you know, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Um, for, I mean, that's exactly what Cain, you know, Cain was doing. Exactly. Cain was just throwing it out there, hoping to please God, but he really wasn't putting any faith in it. He didn't believe, he's just like, well, I'm just going to buy my way into heaven with just some, I'm just going to throw this out there where Abel was like, I'm going to give him my best, you know? And I, I, and it, like I said, that was before the law. So they really didn't even know anything. They was just like, well, I want to honor God. Abel was doing it to, in honor God. And Cain was like, well, if I give this to him, I, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll find some favor in there. It was kind of like a <laughs> lucky shot. Like you're talking about, you know? <laughs> I'm going to buy my way some favor and it doesn't work that way. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So, and so then the last one I want to look at before um, we close this one is Noah. Yeah, at, at the time that Noah came into the picture, everybody was really corrupt. So uh, like people were eating babies or, you know, killing each other and they, things were just really bad. Actually, a lot of the stuff that's happening now was happening then, but that's all it was. You know, it was very, very bad. Um, and it said, uh, the Lord saw the wickedness of the human race and became, had, that had come on earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of human heart was only evil at the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on earth and his heart was deeply troubled. Now, before this, it was talked about actually about uh, some of the fallen angels coming and um um, sleeping with the human women and that produced um, a lot of this trouble <laughs> it was because um, the, the fallen angels which were Satan demons and stuff took human form slept with the women and then it just corrupted everything very quickly um, and it says so that so the Lord said I will wipe them from the face of the earth and the human race I have created and with the animals and birds and creatures that move along the ground, I for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the Lord's uh, in the eyes of the Lord. 
Then it says, um, this is account of Noah and his family. Noah was righteous man, blameless among the people of that of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Now, Noah and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and uh, Japheth, Japheth. But here we go again. This is faith. He walked faithfully with God. He had that relationship with God. He talked with God daily. Um, you know, he didn't do anything without God. It was a daily habit. So because of that daily habit of seeking God and talking with God, God found favor on him. And he actually essentially saved uh, mankind because he was righteous. And the one thing that I want to point out, <clears throat> especially for today's time and what's going on in the United States and stuff, <clears throat> he didn't he didn't bend it to the world's way. You know, he uh, he stood out. He had to stand out. People made fun of him. And, and I'm sure they were like, what in the world are you doing? And they thought he was crazy and all of this th stuff. But he still pursued his relationship with, Christ, with God over what the people were doing around him and over what, what they were saying at the time. Because... <clears throat> The people were completely corrupt. They were, you know, uh, doing all kinds of lewd acts that they shouldn't have been doing. And um, it, he, I mean, if God looked down and he heard it from heaven that they were just that bad, it had to be really bad. <laughs> but Noah still went against the against the waves and and put his faith in God above all that was going around him. Of course, anybody that stands up against the crowd, so to speak. Uh, they're going to make themselves noticed. Yep. And he didn't do it because of that. He did nope. it because he, his relationship with God. He didn't have, in his mind, he had no other choice. Yeah. And, and I think even today, if we fail to, uh, if we cave into the politically correct way of doing things, yep. if we decide to go with what the world wants us to do, uh, what, is, what is that path anyway? You think about it. Man has changed their ideas over the millennia. Everybody thinks, well, you know, this is the newest and greatest, and this is really great, and this is the way things should be. But if you look at what they're talking about, it's just like, it blows your mind. It's just yeah. like, this is totally wrong. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, but yeah. yet they're pushing it. And, yeah. and by the way, as yes, like we've said before, anything that man comes up with will fail eventually and, fa mm -hmm. and fail to do what they say it's supposed to do. It's yeah. going to happen. You have to compare it with the word of God. And that's how, how can you compare it with the word of God when they're telling you that this is right and that is right? Um, you know, and they're making excuses, just like we talked about Satan did begin with. He twists things to make it sound good. And how are you going to know if that's actually God's will or what God says if you don't have that relationship with Christ? You have to put God's word first. And that's exactly what Noah did at that time was he was going completely against the crowd. But he put God first and what he knew to be right because of that relationship with, with God. And that's what we have to do now. And they're telling us that, that um, it's a woman's choice because it's her body uh, and they're 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 twisting things to tell you that the that the that the the unborn child within their womb is their body and it's not no scientifically it isn't oh it's not it's got completely different dna I mean, it's it, got it, all of those things and it's got life and i love the fact that they put the heartbeat bill out there and a lot of people are, are actually pushing that forward but satan's going to try to twist things and tell you one thing but unless you know God, what God's feeling is on it and the relationship, have a relationship, you can easily be deceived. And that is where, where your relationship and faith really comes in, especially during these times, is you can't do what's right if you don't know what's right. Exactly. See, and that's, that's the problem right now, for example. I mean, we have so much information available to us. I mean, it's, an, it's mind-blowing. Yep. All the, the, the uh, media and all the things that we have that bring us the knowledge of this world, how it works, how other things, well, how other men think it works. 
and we even have the Bible and so many variations. It's just amazing. Not, not so much variations, but in translations. And, and we have it at our fingertips. Yep. Yet, yet people still listen to people out there who probably, I don't know, I mean, there are smart people out there. But unfortunately, some smart people are using their brains for other reasons other than your welfare. Trust yeah. me, it's not for your welfare. And unfortunately, it's that, for their own gain. It's for their own gain. Yep. It's almost always goes back to their own greed, their ego, their, their uh, uh, lust for power, that yep. kind of thing. It, it goes back to the original sins. Yeah. And if, if, unless you have that spirit, unless you uh, seek God and read the Bible, this Bible that's been around for th most most of it, not all of it, but at least 2,000 years, mo but uh, some of it's been around for longer than that, four or uh -huh. 5,000 years. It hasn't survived that long because it's just some something written by men. Right. It's survived because it's the inspired word of God. Yep. And God's word is, is unchanging. And um, it well, God is unchanging. The That's yep. the thing. God never changes. Men do. Men the earth does. And that's the thing. People don't understand why things in the Bible look like they, like from the Old Testament to the New Testament, they think that it contradicts. It doesn't. It was man's perception of who God was that changed. Because in the Old Testament, they didn't have that personal relationship that, because Adam broke that contact. Like we were talking about, he could, Adam walked with God and Noah walked with God. You know, he, he put his trust in him. But the ones that didn't had no concept of who God was. And even those ones, they, they had a, a uh, twisted image of who God was because they didn't know his love. So they were trying to figure out who this God was that created them, where we have Jesus to, to see who God is. Right. And we've said this before. I, I don't know. I've, I used to read a lot. I don't read as much other than the Bible, but I, I used to read all kinds of books and so a lot of, even novels, but even mainly historical books in almost every case. In fact, I don't, I can't remember any isolated uh, group or tribe or civilization somewhere that did not have a faith in some kind of yeah. God. They had this knowledge of God. They knew that God existed. They also believed in some kind of afterlife, usually a, a heaven and sometimes heaven and hell or, or the equivalents. Yeah. Uh, and so these all existed, but they were isolated from what our, our civilizations and from what Noah was. So they, they did have some idea and knowledge that there was something a super being that was above us yeah. but they had no idea exactly what he wanted where what he was they would make us the sun a god they would make a mountain a god or you know you go on and on through all these different gods that are out there yeah the one god that has always been through all this is right here yeah. in the bible it's always all, is. all these other gods you can talk about all these other gods that they've had but this one has been around and hasn't changed because we've got his word right here. Yeah. All these other gods don't have that. Yeah. There's some men that have come up with, well, I think, you know, that this is what he's, God wants us to do. Oh, good. I'm going to go by what you say, and you're going to be around for what, maybe 80 years, and then you're gone? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's just, and every time they follow these other gods, something goes wrong again. Yep. And every time we stray away from what God wants us to do, just like Adam did, just like the people in Noah's time did, you could start getting the violence, the hate, you know, racism, if you will, uh, greed, lust for this, lust for that, yep. lust for power. There's always somebody trying to control you. I mean, th it just keeps repeating itself. Like, well, let's see, they, there's a saying, if you, if you forget history, you lose that ability to learn from it. Yeah. Well, I mean, guess what? I, we apparently we keep forgetting it because we're not learning, are we? Not well, learning from theirs, yeah. but we are learning from this. And this is why, this is why people say, "Well, what is it that makes Christians so much different?" Not really physically different, 
but we are spiritually different because we're learning from God's word, not from somebody else's word, some guy that's lived maybe, like I said, 80 or 90, maybe 90 years. And, and he's come up with some idea or a different idea about what is best for us. Right, and usually right. it turns out wrong. Well, and the thing about the um, God's word that's different from other religions is when you're reading the word, God's changing you from the inside out. So he's changing your heart first. And then as your heart changes, you're and you're you're reading it, you're renewing your mind. And that's what happens is it's a, an internal change and it's not a thought process. I mean, it is a thought process too. You're changing your mindset, but it starts in the heart. It's not a bunch of rules of, of do's and don'ts like a lot of places are and, and a lot of religion is. Is do's Almost and don'ts. And you can't change the way, um, you can't change the way you act or live by saying well, you can't do this or you can't do that because your flesh automatically wants to do the opposite. You know, it wants to rebel against rules, and that is flesh. But God works on the heart, and then He changes the attitude behind it so that you want to please God, like Abel. Abel wanted to please God, where Cain was doing it because he thought it was necessary. Well, I, I've heard people say, well, there's thousands of gods out there. Why this one? Well, first of all, let's just go look at what all these other gods do. I mean, we could kind of lump them together fairly easily. Why? Well, number one, like you said, they usually have lists of what you should and shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing they have. Or they, they'll have... Uh, They'll say that God is an angry God and he's going to destroy the people or he wants them to destroy other people that don't believe in their God. You see yeah. what I'm saying? See the difference? And the difference is not this God. This God says he loves you. Yep. He not, doesn't want to destroy you. He doesn't want you to see you get hurt. He, he loves you and he wants us. And this is the big difference. He wants us to even love our enemies. Yep. How many other religions out there are saying, yeah, you've, they're your enemies, but you try and get along with them. You help them if they're hurting and so on and so forth. There's very few other religions. I don't know of any other religion that does that. Yep. Yep. And that's the big difference. Yep. And that's what people don't get. Yeah. He even wants us to love the unborn. But there's so many people out there. It just amazes me, dismisses that and just dismisses the fact that this is an unborn baby they they, they call all other words like fetus or uh, Embry, yeah embryo. All all. you know they use all these other words to get around the fact that it's a living human being and it is living it's got yeah. a beating heart it's in taking in oxygen all the time from its mother yeah but it's taking it in yep well, and god but, says it that he's known you from the time of conception exactly so. And, that we're, and that unborn baby is a separate human being from the mother because it only has half. We've proven this now with science. Yep. So every time we come up with something, another scientific advancement like DNA, what did it prove? It proved that we were all so unique that you are unlikely to find anybody on this earth of 7 billion people. You were unlike, unlikely oh. to find somebody with the same DNA. Exactly. Think about that for a minute. A thousand million people, that's a billion. And that's a lot of people. And there's not one person that has the same DNA, those building blocks of you, you, Rose Chapel, or me, Cliff Grimmel. They're, you're not going to find a, well, yep. God forbid you find another one like me, but that's beside the point. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yep. you agree? <laughs> it's like, you know, how can, how can people, you know, they try to make excuses. And a lot of times they try to make excuses so that they don't have to take responsibility. Right. And that's exactly what it is. You know, we're, we're not going to, and, you know, at Cain was the same, same kind of way. You know, he didn't want to take responsibility for his, his uh, offering. He's just like, well, I'm just going to throw something out there and hope it sticks where, you know, Abel was very uh, purposeful conscientious. and conscientious of, I want to worship God. I want to set him above the rest of them. And that's that's where we're finding a lot of a lot of the issues today is people don't want to take responsibility, and we try to shove it off on somebody else. And if I don't have to deal with myself, great. 
and well, we, and that's, we can't do it that way. And that's why they're attacking Christians right now, because we're saying that certain things are wrong to do. Yep. And and they do not like that. Yep. I, they, 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 so they're going to try and attack us. So because we're the ones that are saying it, we're God's people here that we're supposed to be spreading the word of God. And, and they just don't like that. It's yeah. they, they don't want anybody to believe that what they're doing is wrong. Yeah. So you got to get rid of the person that's telling, saying it. Yeah. That's what really what it's all about. Yeah. Fortunately, there's enough of us. They're going to have a tough time getting rid of us. And by the way, we've got God on our side. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to wipe us out like they think they can. Yeah. We already know the end of this the end of the story so we know god they can, wins. A, they can give me all the stimulus packages and all this money they want but guess what it's going right back into the church some way i'm going to fool them they think i'm just going to squander it on myself they're dead wrong yeah it goes to the church yep well we should close in prayer and, and i think we'll, we'll keep looking at um men of faith and stuff as we keep going forward we'll just keep looking at new examples and and studying some of the the founding fathers of faith. We go Good. Good. <clears throat> Father God, I just thank you for this time we can come together and, and study your, your word. And I thank you, Father God, that you put examples of godly men and people that, that were led by faith in your word so that we can look at them, we can study them, we can see um, how they acted and that we can learn from them. And I just thank you for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.